Hello everybody and welcome to Tiger Tales, a place you'll find stories and fan fictions written and read to you by your host, me, Ty Tiger. Today we're diving back into Marvel Universe 19. Now of course, Marvel Universe 19 is not only a universe, but a YouTube channel, where you can find more storylines in the world of Marvel Universe 19. This channel is created by Cosplay Dude 637 and not only myself and Cosplay Dude upload on there, but also the likes of A-Crown and Mark the Cornish Ranger. So, that being said, let's dive in with today's story. Avengers Earth's Last Alliance is a new ragtag team of Avengers. A lot of them have been Avengers in the comics before, and there's also an OC thrown in there as well. Arclose is a brand new hero and a mutant who's learning how to use his abilities. Not only that, but our new team of Avengers have been having an issue with Green Goblin, who seems to have a new gold crystal that ums his powers. So, with that being said, let's dive in to today's chapter. Avengers, Earth's Last Alliance. Chapter 3, A Thunderous Shock. Johnny Storm woke up in a hotel room, feeling rather hungover. He climbed out of bed and got dressed, and then he looked over and saw his most recent conquest was still sleeping. He shrugged his shoulders and walked out onto the balcony. He jumped off the ledge and allowed the wind to slap his face, waking him up a bit more. Flame on! He called out and his entire body set on fire. He then took flight and headed back to the Baxter building. He flew in and landed inside, his fiery body dying down. He then walked into the kitchen and found something to drink. Raid, Sue, I am home. Come on, we've got to train the new recruits, let's go! Johnny called out. Oi, meathead! Sue and Stretch have left already! A voice gruffed behind him. Johnny spun around to see the orange rock-faced Ben Grimm, also known as The Thing. What do you mean they've already left? Have we got new recruits to train? Johnny barked. No, I have new recruits to train. Mr. and Mrs. Fantastic Couple have gone on holiday. Ben replied. And what about me? Johnny gasped. Sorry, hothead. <laughs> you are benched. Ben chuckled, pushing a note into his chest. Johnny grabbed the note and read it. Dear Johnny, we're going on a cruise for a bit of R&R, &R, and we are not having Ben call us saying you are misbehaving or annoying him or trying to convince the recruits to do something stupid every five minutes. So we have spoken to Sam, and he has agreed to allow you temporary membership to the Avengers so you can keep being a great hero that we all know you are. Maybe you can learn something from him and keep New York safe at the same time. See you soon. Love, Susan. Johnny crumpled up the note. Damn it, Sue! Johnny sighed. Ben just sat down on the couch with a can of beer in hand. He pressed the TV remote and started watching Baywatch. Well, it was nice seeing you, hothead. Ben chuckled, finding it rather amusing that Johnny had to leave. Whatever, man. Johnny huffed. He went into his room and packed his bag, and then he made his way to the Avengers Tower. An hour or so later, the elevator doors opened, and Johnny walked out into the Avengers' top floor and walked through the corridor. He found the door labelled Johnny's room. He walked in and dumped his bag inside. Home sweet home, I guess, Johnny muttered under his breath. Then he made his way to the lounge area and found it empty. He then also gazed into the kitchen and found that empty as well. He looked around and nobody was home. Hello? Anyone here? Johnny called out. Did you hear about that new podcast? What? New podcast, Asu? It's called the Tiger Nexus Podcast, run by Ty Tiger. Hold on. I know that name. He's the guy behind Tiger Tales on YouTube, right? Yep, that's right. And now he's launched his own podcast where he interviews content creators and nerds of all kinds. No way. That sounds so cool. What's the name of the podcast again? The Tiger Nexus Podcast. You can find it on all major podcast platforms. Hold up, he's had Cosplay Dude 637 on there? That's amazing! I know, right? He's also interviewed A Crown, Mark the Red Corners Ranger, and many others. I am totally subscribing to the Tiger Nexus podcast. I don't want to miss anything. Tune in to the Tiger Nexus podcast by Ty Tiger for fascinating interviews with your favorite content creators and nerds. Find it wherever you get your podcasts. Don't miss out.
It had been a few days since Oclo had turned into a tiger. Gambit had trained him a little more in mastering the art of self-control. He couldn't trigger his own powers, but at least he now knew some exercises that could relax his body so he could at least manage potential bad situations in hectic times. Oclo walked into the lounge area and found everyone there. Hey man, how are you today? Sam asked. Good, I guess. It's rather quiet today. Oclo sighed. What's the matter, tiger boy? Want some action, huh? Miles asked. Yeah, kinda. I haven't had a mission yet. Oclo stated, throwing a look at Sam. Hey, you'll get one, okay? When the time is right. Sam replied. It's okay. He was a bit weird about me going out on missions too when I first used me on you. Jane told him with a warm smile. Sir, we have a situation with Green Goblin leading a bunch of Hydra soldiers downtown. Jarvis said, butting in. Alright, Miles, Jane, suit up. This time, I'm coming with you. Rira and Oclos, hold down the fort, Sam ordered. Sam and Miles and Jane all ran out of the room and headed to the suit-up room. Moments later, Rira and Oclos could see out of the window and saw Spider-Man swinging away with Thor and Captain America both flying overhead. Uh, we have noodles, Riri stated awkwardly. Yeah, okay, I could eat, Oclos nodded. Coming up, then, Riri chimed. Riri started cooking, chopping up uh, everything that she needed and getting all the food out of the cupboard. Oclo sat there and watched Riri as she could. She turned on the TV and saw the news reporter stood there broadcasting from Harlem. The news reporter was reporting about a gang war that spilled onto the streets. Riri could also see Rio Morales ducking behind some cars. Oh my god, Riri gasped. Oh, that's uh, Councilwoman Morales, right? Arklo stated. Yeah, and that's Miles' mother. I have to go. Jarvis, set up the Mark IV, Riri ordered. The Mark IV has not been battle-tested, Miss Williams. Jarvis stated. I said do it, okay? Safe or not, I have to go. Riri snapped. Then she turned off the stove and started walking out of the room. Hey, what about me? Oclose called out. Look, I have to go, okay? If I don't, Miles would never forgive himself and anyone else. Especially if something happened to his mum, okay? That is his home. Harlem's his place, so I have to help. Just stay here. Riri ordered. Then she stormed out of the room and Oculus followed her into the suit-up room and she saw the new Ironheart suit. Haven't you used this pink and black suit before? Oculus asked. I did, yes, but I had it upgraded with more weaponry, Riri stated. She stepped onto the platform and the suit opened up and Riri stepped into it, the suit closing around her and her eyes and the heart shape on the chest lit up. See you soon, okay? The new and improved Ironheart said. Then Ironheart took flight and flew out the hangar doors. Arklo sighed and walked back into the lounge and turned to the TV screen as he saw the gang war and saw the police getting caught in the gunfire. I'm not just going to stand here. I gotta help, Arklo muttered to himself. He ran upstairs up to the helicopter pad and he stood on the roof. He shook his arms, he closed his eyes and took a very deep long breath. Okay, you mysterious ex-gene, let's get things right. People need my help. Riri needs my help. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta fly. Come on. We got this. Come on. We got this. Come on. Arklos muttered to himself. He opened his eyes and his eyes turned bright green. He looked down and he was floating several feet off the ground. Yes! He cheered. His entire body wavered around and he held his arms out, steadying himself. He then threw himself forward and started flying. He managed to remove himself over the city and he headed to Harlem. <laughs> Kiri Dog, you're friends with the player Purin, right? That I am. Why do you ask? Oh, I just saw a story about him on YouTube. Yeah, that would be Sword Art Online, the Cornish Saga on Tiger Tales. Hold on, man. Tiger Tales is ran by Ty Tiger, and I know this story was done by Cosplay Dude 637. You're right on both accounts, Klein. Cosplay Dude 637 has brought back story time by collaborating with Ty Tiger, and they have brought his stories back to life on Ty's channel. That's awesome! I love their work. I'm definitely checking out more of their collabs. For exciting stories like Sword Art Online, The Corner Saga, head over to Tiger Tales on YouTube and check out the playlist Storytime with Cosplay Dude 637. And don't forget to hit that like button and ring that reminder bell so you can stay up to date with all the amazing stories by Ty Tiger and Cosplay Dude 637. Iron 
Ironheart landed on the ground and aimed her hands out. She shot both repulsors and fired both of them hitting two gang members. They fell off their feet and hit the floor. Some of the rival gangs aimed their guns at Ironheart and started firing at her. Their bullets just bounced off of her. She then stood tall and her shoulder pads opened up and two flashbangs fired out and bounced off the ground before going off. Ironheart then jumped over the car and landed next to Rio Morales. Hello, Councilwoman, Ironheart said. Riri, thank God you're here. Riri sighed in relief. You need to get out of here now. I promise I'll sort this out, Ironheart told her. Okay, but please be safe. Rio demanded. Yes, ma'am, Ironheart said with a salute. Rio stood up and slowly scurried away behind the police barricade. Ironheart jumped over the car and found the gang members recovering from the flashbang. Then she ran up to one of them and punched one in the stomach, sending him flying back into a wall. She turned around and fired her repulsor blasts, hitting another thug's leg, tripping him over. Then suddenly, Oculus crashed onto one of the thugs. He climbed to his feet, grunting as he did. Ironheart turned around and thrust herself over to Oculus. Hey, what are you doing here? And you're not wearing your super suit, Ironheart barked. I had to help, and sorry, I forgot, Oculus said sternly. Okay, fine, but next time at least suit up, Ironheart growled. Then the pair of them jumped around the street, taking out the gang members as they took down the last few members. A sudden blur bolted past them. Oculus and Ironheart both stopped fighting and looked around. You saw that, right? Oculus asked, confused. It's alive, but my scanners aren't picking up anything. I don't even know what it is, Ironheart replied. The blur ran past and smacked Ironheart as hard as it could. She spun around and crashed onto the ground. Then the blur ran past and hit Oculus. Then it stopped on top of a car. We go way back, don't we? A man barked out. It's you. Hell, I'm surprised you're still alive. Ockloos replied. Wait, you know this guy? Ironheart asked as she rejoined Ockloos. Yeah, he calls himself Thunderstruck. He grew up in the foster system with me. We shared a few homes a couple times. You always had this idea that the world hated mutants, so he has to hate the world. Ockloos sighed. We go way back, don't we? Thunderstruck chuckled. What are you doing here, man? Ockloos asked. Here? Oh, why am I here to kill you? Thunderstruck told him. Bring it on, Oclo snapped. Thunderstruck grinned a devilish grin and then bolted off once again, becoming a blur. Then he ran down the street. Then he returned to Oclo, building up the kinetic energy with every single step he took. He then stopped one step in front of Oculus and released all the kinetic energy that he built up into one powerful compressed kinetic blast, which hit Oculus and Ironheart head on, neither of them having the time to retaliate. They were both thrown back across the street and flew down and hit the ground hard. Any glass window found in buildings or cars shattered as the cars crumpled and both heroes hit the ground. Suit power at 10%. Jarvis told Ironheart. Thunderstruck bolted up to Oculus and grabbed him by the collar, bringing them up to the, off the ground. Ugh, time for my revenge! Thunderstruck grinned. Oculus stared at Thunderstruck. As he pulled him up off the ground, Oculus glared at Thunderstruck. Oculus's eyes suddenly turned purple. Gambit was voiced by Cosplay Dude 637, and Thunderstruck was voiced by Austin. This podcast is a production of the Three Ranger Bros Studios in association with Zio to Hero the Podcast. Thank you very much for listening to this chapter. If you want to hear more fan fictions and storylines, I have plenty of other Tiger Tales channels that you guys should be checking out. I want to use this moment to thank all my supporters and the partners of Tiger Tales. Now, if you'd like to hear me interview content creators about their content or geek about specific topics with a bunch of geeks, make sure you check out the Tiger Nexus podcast. My podcast can be found everywhere you can find your podcast and we have a great time. Usually upload on Mondays. Now, of course, make sure you check out the links down below. It'll lead you to some of my other channels. I game on YouTube. I do artwork on YouTube. And I like to talk about movies, TV shows, and comic books on YouTube. So make sure you go check out the other channels. 
A huge thank you to everyone watching, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and of course hit that notification bell so you don't miss another chapter. War of passion everybody, and I shall see you guys in the next one. That before we can... <laughs> don't touch my Pringles. <laughs>